Today we're talking about a topic that is very near and dear to our hearts, which is how do you uh, effectively assess yourself? How do you assess your body for imbalances? Why do you do it? How do you do it? And what should you do? Stick around because we're talking about it today. What's up, everyone? If you haven't met us before, across the table from me is my brother, Rad Bullmeister. To my left is the superbulous Phil White. What? And uh, <laughs> behind the mic is Richie, the voice of God, and I am Yanni Bullmeister. Together we are Unity Gym and the Unify Movement System. Before we get started, if anyone is new to the channel, if you're new to the replays on YouTube, if you're new to the podcast, we put links in the descriptions for our blueprints. They are the biggest secrets, lessons, call them what you may, that we've learned over the last two decades of our own training and coaching thousands of our clients. You can download them for free. They're a world of knowledge bombs. Uh, guys, how are we doing today? Pretty good. Great. Yeah, pretty good. It's a um, interesting topic to talk about because this is the this is the one that we would want to talk about the most yeah i know i'm so i'm super fun. excited that we did a poll and the overwhelming majority uh 41 to 26 uh voted for this topic and i'm like oh giddy up we can we can uh, talk about this all day long yeah and if you haven't voted in the poll still do it like it's really good and and feel free to put suggestions for things you do want us to cover because you know we don't just sit here to listen to each other talk. We do it to help you guys figure out stuff. So, yeah, please put um, you know suggestions in there for what you really want to know because that will yep. definitely inform what we do. And I'll get Rad to unlock the suggestion option so other people can do it other than us. It, it's unlocked. Shouldn't. It is, yeah. really? No. Yeah. yeah, Vinny got his topic in there. Yeah, I wrote that. Oh, you wrote, he ah, wrote it. Yeah. I, look, I don't know how to do it, mate. I, well, leave a comment. If you can't do it, leave a comment. We'll yeah, like Vinny did, and we'll, we'll, put, the, <laughs> we'll put it in there for you. <laughs> Got it. That was our intention. Anyway, before we get started on today's topic, a question's come up here that I want to uh, quickly address from a new member of the tribe. Welcome, Lee Kirtley. Lee is a BJJ black belt uh, competitor, and he's looking to improve his flexibility, and he's asked the question, what program would be right for him? Uh, and, and that's very easy to, to answer. The 100% the one, uh, straight up answer to that question, Lee, is the Flexibility Masterclass will be the ideal program for you. The 18 minute mobility routine is an entry level into flexibility for people who want to do like a daily routine that's gonna make them feel better and produce uh, a little bit of a result. Whereas the Flexibility Masterclass is specifically designed to really level up your flexibility in, in your whole body. Uh, now, the second part of the question is what has me concerned. And I think it will have all of us concerned because it it, it sort of falls short of um, th there's a there's a lack of understanding here of how the body gets flexible and what um, Lee's said here is he's tried a couple of things over the years yoga for BJJ some hyperbolic stretching program from Facebook which we've seen uh, advertised I have no idea what's in that program and what it's like uh, but it seems to do okay on on the advertising um, on social media. And he says, I'll be honest, nothing has seemed to show results quick enough to keep me pursuing it. I gave both of them four to five weeks and got bored. Now, this is, a, this is, this is why you're not flexible, my guy. Uh, the flexibility is, a, is, is not about lengthening. And we talk about this a lot. And this is why I want to answer this before we get into the question, uh, before we get into the topic of today. Flexibility is not about elongating muscles. It's not about uh, making yourself more elastic. It's about breaking down the brain's inhibitors. It's about um, proving to your brain that you are strong and stable in end ranges of motion so that it allows you to access more and more of those ranges of motion. And unfortunately, the reality is that that doesn't happen in four or five weeks. It can take a lot longer than that to see an initial result because if you're working with a very strong foundation which it sounds like you are as a bjj black belt you're going to be a very solid person i'm assuming you're going to be very very strong uh you're going to have a lot there for the body and the brain to adapt to and adjust to and you're just going to have to give it a little bit more time now i would love to sit here and bang the drum that our program is more superior to everything else you've tried and i probably do believe that 
and I'm sure Rad believes that and Richie believes that and possibly even Phil believes that. But if you give our program four or five weeks, I'm sorry, it's not going to work. It's not going to do anything for you. Yeah. Um, I didn't get a breakthrough in flexibility until six months of dedicated training. And I'll tell you why our program is better than hyperbolic stretching without having ever seen it, because it advertises bullshit. Yeah. Because the front end marketing campaign, it says get the splits in four weeks. Yeah. What a fucking load of shit and it pisses me off. Yeah. It's as fucking good as these dipshit programs that were getting around ten years ago telling people that they could lose fat in thirty days. Yeah. It's a fucking joke. It pisses me off. It makes my blood boil. <laughs> well, you it's heard exactly how <laughs> Rad felt. It's making people sit here and think, oh, I tried flexibility for five weeks and I got nowhere. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's so, it's so shit that people that are flexible are peddling that bullshit. Man. Yeah. yeah. Can get flexible. In it's weeks. very, very true. You've got to understand the process of flexibility is literally, it's, it's so much more about what's happening in your central nervous system than it is what's happening in your muscles. The muscle spindles and the muscles are sending signals to the c central nervous system to, to sort of suggest that maybe this is dangerous and to re re contract and not let us go there. And you have to spend enough time in those positions and build enough strength in those positions. So you need to be training in a combination of lengthening and and tensioning those muscles under load and under in length in the lengthened position to achieve greater flexibility and and depending on your background depending on your history most of the time athletes elite level athletes are the slowest to adapt because they've spent so many years developing tightness in their joints uh, that yeah you, 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 it's going to take a little while to unfold but trust me it does happen you want to add yeah, anything to which that? I think is like <clears throat> excuse me a good thing like we want a body that is resilient and you're not going to be just like massively impacted by like small things i've been um i listened to a really good um sort of explanation on uh kind of the most current like understanding of how manual therapy and massage actually affects the body and it's something that i've always kind of found really frustrating with people's un like thinking the way that massage works which is again along that sort of like elongating and changing the actual structures you're working on like just imagine if that did happen like you would if you sat in a chair for like you know 10 minutes or uh you know an hour or eight hours like we do all day like your body would morph and change to these like the pressures being placed on your body it's the same with stretching like if we had a, a if you could do like this eight minute hyperbolic stretching routine and suddenly your like pelvis would be going into positions it's never been before, like that would be massively detrimental to yeah. like the stability and kind of structural integrity of your body. Yeah. Like our body adapts slowly because that's the like best way for it to do it. Because once you get to the, like your sort of ranges and positions and you've got like strength and, and you, as a BDJ person, like- Yeah, you, know, you don't want like, your you body to go <laughs> easy, brother. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if it could suddenly be like, you know, change, you, you would be a, you'd be torn apart. You, like. you'd, be, you'd be tapped out every time you jumped on the mat, exactly. mate. So, you know? and, and so I want to reinforce though, I want to reinforce, like I watched the UFC on the weekend and I got a lot of friends who compete at really high levels in BJJ. Uh, and uh, we got guys that train here and that uh, do BJJ. We got a brown belt, a, a national champion um, in his weight division. And you got to understand, like it is a great thing to do. I watched a guy on the weekend in the um, in the UFC uh, fighting under the Covington um, uh, card, get his arm twisted around into a, into a 360, which what we would call really good mobility uh, here where you, you know, we do shoulder dislocates and things like that here where we train it under load. Yeah, this dude, the guy, the guy was, tr his opponent was trying so hard for an arm bar and uh, an omoplata and he couldn't get it. The guy's shoulder was just too flexible and he just rolled around it and, and that's what you want, man. So flexibility is certainly something to strive for, but you got to give it more than four or five weeks. Like that is, that is not even a, 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 a blink in the eye of what we do here. We, our guys turn around flexibility in a year. I've seen mm. insane results produced in 12 months yep. from people who walk in with sti like really, really Barely stiff. being able to touch their toes. Yeah. To and, getting and very flexible. To getting in incredibly flexible, you know, and strong at the same time. You've got to be developing yeah. strength and flexibility. So, yeah, it looks like you're on the hunt for a magical program, program that doesn't exist and you need to deal with like, you need to take a step back and look at like your motivation because yeah. yeah. 
that's that's the yep. thing that's going to change. And, and what Rad said about that hyperbolic stretching program is absolutely true. I didn't want to go there because I just don't like to slag people off. But the way that Dickhead advertises that program, saying that you can get from a, a crappy middle split to a full balls to the floor middle split in four weeks, mm. is charlatan. And he it's, said, and and he, he shows a picture of him of him. So it, I've seen multiple ads for it and it's the same guy so I'm guessing yeah. that's the dude that does it I've also seen the same guy it's the yeah, bald it is, guy it is, yeah. in Shaolin monk outfits yeah. and it says before and then after and it shows him before where he's about this high off the splits and then after on the splits same yeah. four weeks what a load of shit that guy's done kung fu for probably a decade or two yeah you know like probably since childhood but yeah. the other thing is that the middle splits is a terrible terrible way to advertise flexibility because there's so many limiting factors in the pelvis that can prevent someone from getting a true middle split. Anyway, let's, let's not go yeah. any deeper into this because it's yeah. not the topic of the but day. Welcome, Lee. And yeah, welcome, to the, welcome. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the bitch session. <laughs> but also welcome to the Lee Club. So many Lees. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the Lees. <laughs> Big shout out. And, and we love BJJ here, brother. It's a brilliant movement practice. So yeah. it's great to have a black belt, someone of your caliber in the group. Yeah, uh, awesome. I'd like to hear and see more of you yep. in future. So to today's topic, how to assess your body for imbalances uh, requested by the people and answered for the people. Why, how and what? So why assess yourself? For, first and foremost, we want to really frame why. Yeah, and, why? and this is, this is um, something that's what very said, personal yeah. to me. <laughs> and the reason, the reason why we have the assessment is really because of it, it stemmed from my history of doing the wrong thing and really, really messing myself up. I, I joined a gym when I was about 19 years old. For the very first time, I was heavily into boxing and I had got to a point where I was so skinny and tall that my coach suggested I go and try and put a bit of muscle on because I was like a strong wind would have blown me over. Uh, I was very fit. And I did what every young boy does, adolescent. They team up with the mate that knows the most about the gym because he's been going for a few months and you, kick off to a gym without any sort of instruction whatsoever and we did the bench press bicep curls and lap pull downs for about two years it, like three days a week you know there was nothing else there was no structure to it there was no balance no concept or notion of oh how do we train uh agonist and antagonist muscles front and back of joint opposing muscle groups things like that to stay in balance and naturally what you can expect happens over a few years of doing that I, uh, I really messed my posture up. I really messed the function of my shoulders up. I ended up really rounded in the shoulders because it's sort of married to the boxing posture, which is that you want to roll your shoulders forward a bit to increase your range and, and, and tuck your chin under. And yeah, you know, it, it, was a, it was detrimental to my health. And then eventually I started going out and getting into partying and uh, I, got, I so, sort of started to get interested in break dancing. Uh, not that I was ever good at it. And uh, I got into doing a little bit of acrobatics and one night I did a backflip on the dance floor and, and uh, it, my shoulder just did, was not structurally capable of taking that sort of load and I completely destroyed my shoulder. Um, and so yeah, it's very, very near and dear. The concept of training without balance is really, really detrimental. And the problem is the psychology around, especially men, especially men, because women what they tend to want to do is build booties and building booties, it's kind of hard to mess your body up working on glutes, you know, a lot harder than w what men work on, which is the mirror muscles, biceps, abs and chest, because all of those muscles are part of the flexor chain. They're all they're all muscles that can internally rotate your shoulders and and they, they and they can all really uh, stuff up your posture, you know, and, 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 and affect the ability to do other things uh, to be athletic you know, to be well balanced. And so uh, that's the first reason why it's super important to assess yourself. And there are different levels of assessment that we're going to talk about here. Uh, there's three different assessments that we do. You could throw in a fourth if you considered pathology part of that protocol, which we used to do, but we don't deal with really unhealthy, overweight people anymore. So we don't uh, re uh, prescribe it as much anymore. But yeah, from a basic level, if you run at something really hard, and you fail to uh, assess yourself along the way, you will create imbalances in your body. You have anything to add? Uh, I would simplify it much more than that. If you're not assessing, you're guessing. So well, yeah, that's that's if you're um, yeah, if you don't. Uh, well, we're talking about why why assess because if you don't, you're guessing. If you don't assess yourself, then you're just going. And I did that for over a decade. I was like, oh, 
I'll do this this month and I'll do that. And if somebody asked me why, there was never an answer for it. But if you assess yourself and somebody says, well, why are you doing that? Well, you've got a good answer. You can say, well, I did an assessment and this showed up as being... Yeah, but most people don't even have that in the, in the realm of their thought process when they were... I mean, I'm just... just go back to... And Richie can chime into this because um, he's worked in gyms before. He's worked out in gyms before he met us. When you walk into a gym, how do you choose what you do? Oh, you look at what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Usually it's like what it, you might be graced with a, a, a training buddy. You ask somebody that and then know, it, that's been there for longer than you and say, what do you do? And then they tell you. And yeah. then you go, oh, I don't and it's, try that. it's generally always. Or you watch YouTube these days and it's then you gen, come in. And, ge well, nowadays there's a lot more information than when yeah. I started out at a gym. So maybe it's a bit easier now. But you generally go and do what you want to look good, right? Like you go, okay, I, uh, I'm going to. Hit the hit the weights and well, not necessarily. That was your goals, but so you are that you, you you have your goal and then you go and do what you think is going to achieve that goal. Yeah. So yes, most people want to look better. That's probably the driving factor for most for the average person that goes to the gym. So that's what a lot of people do. But there are people that go to the gym for a different goal and do the wrong thing, pursuing a different goal than looking good. You know, yeah. like there's people that. Can I get my two eyes in there? Yeah. So from a physio standpoint, like it's very <clears throat> important to, if you're going to make an intervention, you want to know that that intervention works. So, you know, in our case, it's like often treatment sort of stuff, but I'm definitely more on the exercise side of things. So you want to have a look at um, where the body is at the beginning, and then you want to do an intervention and then see if there's a change. And yeah. like, <clears throat> just because there is a change, it doesn't always mean that the change came from the things that you think it came from, but it's a good sort of bit of feedback as to whether or not you're, d you're on the right track of what you're doing. Um, so that definitely applies for, um, uh, you know, just general training as well. And I think f tackling, you know, that motivation piece that, that Lee came up with, like if you can assess at the beginning and then have set kind of times where you reassess, then that's a great way of dealing with motivation for training if you can see that there is like objective progress. So um, that would be my kind of two big reasons as to why the why is so important. Yeah, I haven't even got to the the the, the, the means to track progress yet. Or I, I'm, I'm trying to pre-frame what the majority of people don't do, which is to take into consideration how the body functions and how it, what's going to optimize the body as opposed to make the body look a certain way. Because if you do strip back the, the primary reason why people go to gyms, it's, as, it's for aesthetic reasons. It's either to lose weight or to gain weight. Mm -hmm. Most people aren't going there for athletic performance, at least in the beginning. Yeah, I think in our, our like in the Unity gym community, like people are. Yeah, but we're di different. Yeah, we're, exactly. We're, but we're very different. But we're know? talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. We're, yeah. we're, we're talking to 3,000 people around the world who are. Yeah, I we're would like to know. To a hell of a lot more than 3,000 people. That's just the people that are in this group. Yeah, that's right. We're I would like to know. I'm really um, keen to know. How do you select what exercises you do when you go to the gym? Like what? Because there's yeah, a lot of people here. We, that we've got a lot of people on the live stream here. Let us know. What? What? Please. What, please what let us know. What is the thought process behind the exercises that you do in your training? Yeah. What caused you to select those exercises? That, that would have been a good question of the day, I reckon. Yep. Um, that's all right. That's all right. You, you, you did well. You did well. <laughs> Bloody hell, Phil. Yeah. I just but, still kind of want to know what uh, uh, Jada's assessment, like what that assessment protocol was. So yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, kind yeah, of why yeah, I asked right. Jada if you All right. So uh, should we get into a little bit of the how? Well, yeah, in, 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 in a sec, in, in one moment. Um, the, reason, the, the, the reason why um, I think this is important is because I think it's important to acknowledge, yeah, what, what will... Um, th this is the uh, just a, a quick little sneak peek. This is exactly what our UMS online coaching subscription is. All it really is is an assessment protocol to teach people how to know what their body needs to perform at the highest level, rather than just guess what they what they should be doing. You know, mm -hmm. and if you strip it right back, other than the fact that you get every one of our programs yeah, included, I mean, like you get thirty two programs. Yeah, like. <laughs> you get you get access to everything, but. The, the secret source of the UMS is the uh, UMS Structural Balance Blueprint. And that's what we don't allow, we don't sell as a standalone product because it's had so much research gone into it and that's really what we kind of protect. That's our, I guess, our IP. But we're going we're gonna to give you that this week on this series. We're going to tell you exactly what it is. But this, is, it, this really intrigues me because I, I know from my experiences that I just used to go there and do what my friends told me to do or what we, it was almost like random. Oh, it's, it's, le it's leg day today, so we do lots of quads, mm -hmm. you know. Um, anyway. 
Okay, so the uh, the what we we um, break down into uh, uh, three, if not four, different assessments. First and foremost is length tension, which is ch uh, assessing flexibility and range of motion. And that is uh, generally what we used to, when I was doing very clinical st uh, strength and conditioning, that was what we did first, because that gives you a series of red flags that can predict if you push something, like for instance in a squat, if you don't have a certain range of movement in the hamstrings, then you're mo more likely to get excessive butt wink and you're more likely to struggle in that squat. Uh, if you don't have a certain um, length uh, length in the uh, dorsiflexion of the ankles, you're going to have to adjust your foot stance and things like that. You know, so we used to take people through a series of uh, length tension assessments first, and then we would do our flexibility test, which is the overhead squat test. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go through what we do next? Yeah, well, that's a, that, that is a part of what we do, but then the, um, a, a massive part is to test the balance, uh, the structural balance between movements, certain strength training movements. And we have 15 different movements that we do that assess, it's all based off a, a bench press and a back squat. Um, and it's, it, it's come from our friend, Tony Bataji, who's a um, PhD holder and just an unbelievably- um, Who adopted it from Charles Poliquin and a well, bunch of other people, yep, yeah. Yep, who basically has read so many peer-reviewed studies and has worked with some of the top strength and conditioning coaches and knows them and worked with Olympic athletes and has looked at the data and put it together into something that is a usable assessment protocol that personal trainers like us can use. And then we've taken that and adopted it into our UMS. And it's basically, you know, once you get what your, your maximum weight that you can lift for a squat and a bench press for six reps, there's... 13 other lifts that are all should be a certain percentage of each of those lifts and then whether they are out or in balance tells you where the areas of your body that you need focus on and we have tremendous success with it when you look at what our members at the gym that have been doing this for, for just six months you see the change in their bodies it's unbelievable people go from not being able to do one or two reps of the weight that they're meant to be able to lift for a you know a external rotation or whatever it is to to being really strong and you see the change that happens in them in their physique in the way that they can stand in the way that they move um, and yeah this is a uh, it's it's a it's a it's an amazing amazing process you know and so you jumped into what I want to talk about on Thursday more so but what I'm trying to preface right now is why where the assessments came from and why to why to do them you know um, because there's a lot of research and you always like to just say Tony Bataji but he didn't make any of it up He's just following yeah. the research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, right. That's right. As that's, are we, and then that's adapting so, it to our that's program. That's what's so good about Tony is that he's just objective with what he does. So he just takes what the other people have researched and then shares it with the world. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. Um, guys, we're gonna. I can see that a couple of you are asking questions here. Um, I just want to answer Sarah's question real quickly. Sarah Roberts says, do you guys offer one-off assessments in North Sydney gym for people around Sydney that are doing the program online? We offer better than that, Sarah, which is for those of you that are doing the program online, we allow you to come in either for drop-in sessions with us or to do a week of training. And if you are able to ever come in just for one week when we do assessment week, I think you'd get a lot out of that. Yeah, you know, that's To be able right. to do it with us, you could do it with me or with Richard um for a week so if that's something that you want to do you can um ask the question or send me a personal message and we'll sarah we'll i am going to answer your question shortly about the weight increase uh, increments because it does tie in with what we're talking about here but um uh i want to go a little bit deeper into where the um the structural balance blueprint comes from you know it's it's not um fluke and there are a few variables that differ um which i want to sort of pre-frame we train people to become strong, flexible, and athletic to build a foundation that can then be used in any sporting application whatsoever. And we've trained uh, professional football players. We've trained, uh, I know in America, we, we say football is as like rugby league, but and then soccer over here, but we've trained both. So soccer and uh, rugby league, which is kind of AFL rugby league, um, 
rugby union uh, we've got lots of different rugby's footballs over here it's not like NFL uh, uh, but we've, we've trained people from all of those sports at elite levels and at sort of uh, weekend warrior levels and uh, and they all carry the strength over and that's kind of what I like to do with athletes is build strong flexible athletic bodies and then they go and, and hone those skill uh, their, their specific skills in a sport but there are a few variables that change the ratio of our assessment um, in the in the literature some of the strength coaches will steer towards doing a slightly heavy um, uh, pulling pattern if they're training a, a rower or something like that and uh, and and vice versa but the the protocols that we've adopted we adopted because the the research indicates that people that train under this pro, uh, this protocol perform at a much higher level in general across all sports and at a much lower risk of injury and that's the reason why we do it mostly it also is what Phil tipped on it provides a really really good means to continually um, assess and progress you know, rather than just sort of guessing, as Rad said, um, and potentially really mucking up the way your body functions, it's a really nice thing to do to base your uh, success off becoming more balanced, as opposed to just becoming really good at one thing, bench press, or really good at one thing, looking good in the mirror. Uh, you, you, you're becoming really, really balanced and, and high functioning and, and a lot less chance of uh, stuffing yourself up. You it's, know? A, it's actually really, really quite amazing for me to see the culture shift in our gym since we started doing this because we only started doing our testing protocol in Unity Gym. I, 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 we were doing it last year, weren't we, Richie, towards the end of last year? Yeah, yeah so it would have couldn't have been much more than a year that we've been doing it in the gym whereas Yanni and I have known how to do it for over a decade um, but we just didn't really think of a way to do it in in group training because we we just had this fear that it wasn't really what people wanted that people just wanted to come to the gym and smash themselves and we got over that and thought stuff it we're going to cater for people the way that we know is a better way to train and the culture that it's created like when I see our members and they, they're so driven to create this balance, like they do their testing week and they uncover an imbalance and they come up to me and ask me, so what do I do now? How do I do this? And I teach them how to cater the program to their individual needs. And you see the motivation that they have, you know, on, on leg day when they're doing their unilateral movements to get rid of their unilateral imbalances or whatever it is. Like it's, you know, or when they start doing squats twice a week because their deadlift is plus the strength of what it should be in relation to their squats you know it's it's really cool yeah so it's a really it's a really cool culture shift from going to other gyms where people are you know their benchmark for success is always you know can they reduce the time that they can do this hectic circuit workout or whatever it is you know um, well, which they feel like they're wiped out and yeah like yeah that's and right yeah. 20 at the end yeah <laughs> we, which is you know uh, like we spoke about that yesterday not necessarily a bad thing it's just it is really cool to see people benchmarking success with how balanced their body is you know and um aiden's um had a uh, a good question here that just ties into what I'm saying, which is obviously it depends on the severity of the imbalances, but typically how many mesocycles to get to an optimal balanced range across all exercises. That's like saying how long's a piece of string, yeah. Um, because it totally depends on the individual. And I've seen like I like the two most common imbalances that I've seen in people. This is this is my personal opinion, and you guys tell me what you see. One is that people, a lot of people, have a really poor squat. Um, and it takes them a, quite a while to be able to develop a range of motion that allows them to lift a heavy weight with, you know, with, with confidence. And that takes time for people. And the other one is, is really poor shoulder um, range of motion, which prevents them from doing a lot of um, heavy shoulder movements. And you, have, you see some people that are really good in the upper body, but have a really bad squat. And then you see some people that are really good in their squat, but not great in their upper body. And then you, sometimes you see people that are balanced between the two. And so what I like to say, Aiden, is this is my personal opinion. And I say this a lot, um, and Yanni and Phil don't always agree with me, but my personal opinion is, I like to say, if you've got an imbalance, give it six months, like set yourself in your mind, I'm gonna work on this for six months and I'm gonna do several mesocycles where I change variables, but with the focus to try and fix this imbalance. And I think you can see a really, really big change in an imbalance um, in three to six months. And, I, and I, that's my personal opinion. What do you guys think? 
Three mesocycles is the minimum, and that's what we used to get taught by Charles. Charles was very, very polarizing with this. He used to say, if you can't fix an issue in three mesocycles, and his mesocycles for an elite level person were three weeks, and for an average person, four to six weeks. Um, he used to say, you're, you're a shit coach mm. if you can't sort it out in, in three mesocycles. But he was very polarizing and he was used to working as with well, elite level That's people. what I was just about to say. You know, you're, only, you're only as good as the person that you're training as well. Because yeah. some, you know, you can, it's like they're saying, you can lead a horse to water, but only the horse can drink it. Yeah. And I've had some people where I've given them some advice and watched them run with it and just make the most phenomenal change that, in, in the three mesocycles. But the other thing yeah. I should fra uh, state that is that you know they were training people in a one-on-one -on -one uh, environment and usually there was no limitation to money so that the, that individual would be either sponsored to train with them or, or be able to pay to train with them every single day in a one-on-one -on -one environment where they could really dial things in uh, it wasn't a group environment but I, I would say 12 months 12 months but here's the thing Aiden there's a there's a caveat to your question you will never I don't believe anyone will ever be perfectly structurally balanced it's it's something it's you, you, that's not the reason for it the reason for this is to train in a manner that is steering you in that direction as opposed to training in a manner that's steering you away from that direction mm. which everyone else is doing if you're yeah. not doing this Couldn't agree and more. And what's that? I was just gonna say my um, thoughts on like how long it should take is obviously it's gonna be really variable. But one thing that like when talking about total times, like if you, you've got to take technique into account because you could be hammering away at doing an exercise in a certain way, um, but if you haven't learned how to do the lift in the most efficient sort of way then you're going to be severely limited by the technique rather than your actual true expression of strength. Yeah. Yeah. And like I saw that very much with me when I first started squatting. Like I just could not get my head around squats. I just felt like I was dying every time I did them. Like you'd get stuck at the bottom and just stress out as soon as I started to get heavy. And then um, I went in and we started I working with like days. a strength yeah. coach and it was just like a few little technique cues that like, you know, thinking about how to tighten my upper body so that when I push my legs, my, the rest of my body actually went up. And then in a session I went and put like 20 kilos on the squat and, and started to enjoy them instead of struggling with them so like it's it's so key to sort of think about there's all these different aspects that we always talk about that like with your programming principles and all the other things testing um that impact your progression but you've got to try and realize that um like what it, which p part is the thing that's limiting you and if it's a technique thing then no amount of hammering away is going to change that you've got to kind of get that addressed and that's why we have facebook groups where you can post videos yeah especially online coaching where we do the friday coaching call and and really look analyze at, everyone's analyze in great detail but you know work with a coach work with someone in the gym who's doing things really well watch what they're doing and when i train my clients and um had a really you know great sort of bit of success this morning with a client who like every session i like every lift he does i ask i'm like what are you thinking about to improve on what like your last set and so and now he's coaching himself because he can identify all these things so you've got to be really intentional and you've got to take that kind of growth and learning mindset to your technique and always be striving to do it better yeah yeah now the, the you, you know we're out of time <laughs> i right? do know but i want to spend a couple more minutes on this because there's a few important uh, um, comments in here and also i want to talk about the concept of assessing when you don't have a strategy of using the data that you get from the assessment, yeah. which is a yeah, real yeah, yeah. thorn in my side. Um, first and foremost, a couple of people have jumped in. Sharon Lynn and said, com went to, to, to the question of the day, compound movements, uh, how do you, uh, how, how or, do you, or how, how do you, you select, select exercises? Sharon said, compound movements, deadlift squats, because I, w I was trying to get strong. Nick Blair said, I do strength exercises that support my running. Uh, and this is sort of exactly what I'm talking about. There's no kind of method to the madness with the majority of people. No, if you don't yeah. have and those, are, those are good answers. Those are yeah, really good answers. Like goals. I'm saying yeah. that I'm that I'm doing this because it's these goals, but there's no assessment there. There's no yeah yeah. The, the, you're just you sort of guessing exactly yep. what Rad said. You, if yep. you're not assessing, you're only guessing. Uh, the um, just quickly through. I, I really just want to quickly answer this because Sarah asked this in the group, and it's important to her. She said she's she's starting with only one kilo dumbbells in the foundations program because she wants to dial in the technique and she's asked what uh, for, for a bunch of the movements and she's asked how she should progress the weight uh, like what kind of increments should she jump up each time now first and foremost Sarah if you're still listening uh, we recommend when you're starting on quite a low weight like that we recommend actually <coughs> picking up some um, half kilo wrist weights 
uh, ankle or wrist weights. You can get them on eBay or Amazon for very uh, only a few bucks. Half because and one. You'd need half kilo and one and, kilo. And well, yeah. It because depends. That, well, otherwise you go from five to seven and a half or you can go five, five and a half, seven and a half. But yeah, it depends. One, well, if, if she's got one kilos, I'm assuming she's got one to ten oh, in okay. one kilo yeah, yeah, increments. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. The problem um, is yeah. going from one to two is a 50%, is a 100% is increase in weight. And right. that's what you've got to look at. You know, when you're going, when you're dealing with small increments like that, you can probably go up by 50%, but going up by 100% each time, or you'll go from one to two, that's a 100% increase. Then you'll go from two to three, that's another 50% increase. You've got to start bringing it down because eventually you only really want to be increasing weight by 10, 15, 20% each time. Uh, so I would recommend getting some of those wrist weights. And yeah, look, what uh, one of the guys in the group said is you've also got to be careful with starting too light. Because yeah, you Dave, do, back to this comment. I yeah, think it's spot on. It's spot on. You, you, you do want to make sure that you're getting the correct amount of stimulus or enough stimulus to, to yield a good response from the body. Uh, I know that like dialing in technique, we talk about it a lot. It's really important, but um, you don't want to take it too far. Yeah, you know, I, I've got two cents there. Um, there, you, you need to first focus on the right movement and the right technique. And for a lot of people, that does require dialing back the weight. But then once you've got that, you've got to remember that weightlifting is meant to be challenging. It, it, if it doesn't challenge you, if you don't get feel quite challenged within the rep range that you're prescribed, then it's not creating the adaptation that you want. Yeah. And you've got to it doesn't that. challenge yeah. you, it doesn't change yeah. you. Just make sure, yeah, you, when you are using the light weights to learn injury, uh, sorry, learn the technique and you're practicing, you've got to like pretend that it's the heaviest weight you can possibly lift because you mm -hmm. see people when they end up doing kind of one, two kilo stuff, they'll just be, you know, yeah, so yeah, just yeah, flopping they're the weights thinking. around. And you've got to, like, if you're going to go that light, treat it like a rehearsal, use your, like, all the, principles around you know embracing with breath and, and all of that stuff yep. like and use that as a time to start automating those processes so that as you start to build up the weight like you will yep. be prepared for it because yep. if you just get used to lightweight and then you yep. try and yep. add yep. too much you'll, yep. yeah 100 percent. scott west is uh put a comment here that i'm quite intrigued by he says i'm going through your strength assessment spreadsheet now my overhead press is terrible not sure what the next step is i'll join the ums soon enough I'm first of all intrigued to what strength assessment spreadsheet you're talking about if you're not in the UMS. Yeah, we don't make that available to people. It may have been that ages ago we uh, we did make the structural balance blueprint available to like it was part of some of our flash sales and we decided to stop, stop doing, doing that. that. Okay, so yeah. he might have been one of the lucky people that got yeah, in early. Yeah, before, very, before, very lucky. But this is this highlights US. my last final take home note, which is that an assessment protocol is freaking useless and kind of a waste of time if you don't have a strategy to deploy the data that you get from the assessment. And this is one of the things I dislike about or I frown at with a lot of personal trainers, me included. In the past, I used to over-assess people and then just collect that data and do nothing with it. And yeah. we had a little dig yesterday on the show uh, about an assessment process that Jada went and, and, and received that gave her this this thing that she was concerned about but with no strategy or no means to deploy the data and actually make it useful and uh and that just annoys the crap out of me like scott um scott in the ums this is what the whole program is built on we first bring people through our foundations program which is about learning the form and technique of or, and basic principles of programming uh that the whole sets reps uh, tempo, rest intervals, variables, all the different variables of overload that we use. We want to get you confident and familiar with the program structure first, how we group and select exercises together, how we use primary movements, supplementary movements and complementary movements through the program. And once we've got that, we get you into what we call the progressions program, which is the process of assessment. And then we go through a mesocycle and use the data from the assessments to choose the movements that you focus on for your mesocycle. And that's really, in, 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 in a nutshell, what the UMS online coaching is. And then we, we meet with everyone on a weekly basis to fill them in on where we're at in the mesocycle and uh, analyze people's videos that they put in of their movements and help them with their programming. Mm -hmm. So if you're using that spreadsheet and you're not really knowing where to go with it, you've got to get yourself into that uh, online coaching group, brother. We'll tell you exactly where to go with it. Um, we, we are going to go a little bit deeper into this, though, through the week. So everybody stick around because this is...
is going to be the topic of the week. Um, so you're going to get you're going to learn a lot this week about this stuff. Yeah, he's also asked what should be the ratio of bench press to back squat. Uh, the two of them are not. They're unrelated, they're unrelated, but based on the idea that I had validated by Bass, that I've then that I've heard from other people that have a lot of skin in the game, which is that a good number for a generalist is 150% body weight uh, bench press for one rep and a 200% body weight back, back squat, squat for one rep. The difference would be that your bench would be twenty five percent less than what your back squat is. Yeah, but though, that's yeah. A really quite heavy. But like you know, yeah. But uh, this is like, like if you could do one hundred kilos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this the twenty five percent. Yeah, if you were balanced and you could do a body weight back squat and you weighed one hundred kilos, then a seventy five kilo bench press would be pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, and this is where also it comes into what is your goals and what sport are you playing? You know, like mm -hmm. a, a a football player is going to get a lot more benefit out of a big squat than a big bench press you know and and there's just di different yeah different different ways you can go about it uh lee clement started doing mixed sets some at heavier and some lighter i'm not sure yeah, that was... what the context around that is uh lee clements is saying hybrid with a question mark. Mix sets, I think. Mix sets, okay, yeah. A hybrid set is where you blend two um, uh, progressions together to complete yeah. the amount of volume required to get the workout done properly. How do I build and stretch my traps properly? God, that's a loaded question. Yep. Uh, overhead pressing, by far, in my opinion, is the best trap exercise because it's a movement. It's not isolating an uh, area of the body. <laughs> the, uh, easy question, like build your shoulders in a like systematic sort of way, yep. vertical push-pull, horizontal push-pull. Your traps are tight because they're probably uh, being this like shoulder system is not working efficiently and so you start to get kind of grip and yeah. control with your traps instead of the upper traps instead of yeah. um, with all of the axioscapular muscles so if you develop a balanced training, a balanced training approach um, with vertical push pull and horizontal push pull as is in the UMS system um, yeah. and then do the supplementaries with a like a bit of stabilizing work then yeah. that'll sort itself out. Yeah. Like 100%. Don't, yeah, don't, don't treat the symptom, don't, treat, don't, the yeah, treat the cause. <laughs> treat the system and yeah. yeah, yeah. It'll sort itself out. Yep. Awesome. Fantastic. Right. That's uh, pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We're going to go deeper into this uh, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. So stick around because it is a good topic. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept <laughs> what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that it's far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.